On today's video, it's time to get these parts into paint. Stay tuned. Welcome back and or to the channel. Today we are putting parts into paint. We're going to be using our makeshift paint booth that you saw in our last video. We're going to be getting some primer and sealer on these parts so that we are ready to start putting that final layer of paint on it. And the paint we're going to be using is going to be a red ceramic caliper paint. And the reason we're going to go with this is I believe this will harden a lot better and it will provide a better protection so that we don't have issues with it peeling out. And to prep the surface, we're going to be using a painter or a, a, a self etching primer. This will provide the most adhesion possible for this paint to stick to. Now the cure times on these are going to take quite a while. With self etching, all we need to do is put a light coat on it, give it about 20, 25 minutes, then we can start with this process here. And when we start with this, we may have to do several layers to get the coating, the color, and the coverage that we want. So we'll see that as this process goes along. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the paint booth behind me, get the parts in it. I'm gonna stand them up the way I want them so that I can get them painted and then I'll get you in there so we can see how we're gonna do this. Okay, I've got the parts roughly placed. I'm gonna bring you over and kind of show you how I've laid them out. Now I've put cardboard down because I don't want to get paint on my floor. In that process, I did make it so I can move stuff around. And this will be useful later. So, as you see here, I've got my stuff laid out on my cardboard the way I want it. I'm gonna go ahead and prep this can. You should shake this can very thoroughly. You want to make sure that all the primer is mixed up. One issue that you may have with these spray cans when you buy them is they sit on a shelf like this and they could sit there for several months. Sometimes what you have to do, flip the can upside down and let it sit like that overnight so that all the solvents start to remix again. That way it'll work a little bit better. Sometimes you won't have to do that, but if it's been sitting for a while, 
it's good to just go ahead and tip the cans upside down. And I will be doing that with my bed liner when I need some spray bed liner underneath the truck. I will be tipping those cans upside down before, a day before I actually need them. So now that you've popped the top, all we want to do is put a light coat self etching on these. We don't need to get carried away with this. And when you do self-etching, you definitely do not want it to run because if the etching primer runs, then you have to wait until it dries so that you can wet sand it off. But self-etching will give you kind of a greenish haze or a tint to it. And you want to make sure that you get that tint over all of the part. Like I said again, without getting over spray all over everything. Or runs, I should say. And you will have to do this in layers. You won't be able to just shoot them all at one time. What you're seeing me doing is just rotating the parts as I need to, just so that I can get the coating on it that I want. Because like I said, this is a self-etching. So what this is designed to do is to prep the panel before I put my paint on. That's all this is doing. Okay, to get into the sway bar, I'm gonna have to crawl in there. That way I can get at it better. But this little makeshift paint booth is doing really good to not let over spray it over onto the truck. Which was the purpose that we did this in the first place. Okay, what you're seeing me do here with my shirt is an old school painter's trick. <clears throat> Let me crawl out of the way of that. I should be using a mask. I'm not. 
I will be going to get masks when I go to buy more paintbrushes to do the rest of the project behind us because I need rollers. When I do the bed liner and when I do the other process, I will need rollers. I will also be buying some masks. And I don't think it'll show up very well on camera, but there is a haze in this corner where I was spraying, spraying that etching primer. Because of that haze, that haze would have drifted over to the truck. What I plan on doing is cracking the door and letting that haze get out of here before it gets over to the truck. Now, if need be, I will have to do a waxing on the truck when it's all said and done. What I might do is if the frame painting is going to be a more extensive process, I will have to probably mask off the truck. But you need a special plastic for that so you don't scratch the paint. I do not have that here today. So what I want to do is get these prepped and in paint. Then I can move on to my next step of getting that front frame going. So as this dries, I will be back with you in a little bit. And we will do a second coat of self-etching. Okay, I've been a bad boy. I went in the house and had some lunch. And uh, yeah, I breathed in some of that etching primer. Should always have one of these whenever doing a painting project, especially in an indoor environment. So I will I will be wearing this the rest of the video. Sorry if it sounds weird. And I do have to run my heater, which is behind you. Because I have to have it about 70 degrees in here for that to cure properly. And we want it to not fully, fully cure, but we want it to at least set so that we can get the top coat of paint on this and actually get this painting project done. So now that it's been a few minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and check all these parts. When you check your parts, make sure you're not touching them too much, but you do have to pick them up and at least look all the way around on them. Make sure that they got a full coating of that etching primer all the way on them. And if you missed any spots, don't be afraid to go back and touch them up now, because now is the time to get them before you start putting that top coat on there. Like I said, you want to make sure you're good at this stage because from here on out, everything you put on will only build up from here. If you have a bad base, then the rest of it will not be any good. Okay, when this dries, we're going to be ready to go ahead and start with our color. I'll pull my mask down for a bit. Basically, 
what we're doing is we're just letting everything dry up here before we go ahead and finish this process off. If there's anything that you see now that you need to get at, to make the painting process go easier, make sure you do that now before you uh, start shooting the color. Your primer is done. This part is now ready for paint. There should be enough primer on it. Should be enough primer on it that we can get our color on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay these parts exactly the same. Because I'm going to have to do these in stages. I'm not going to be able to shoot all this at one time. And I will have to rotate how I'm doing it. And because of this, there's cure times and dry times that I have to worry about. So what I need to do is spray one side, give it proper cure time, hit it again. Once I got the color that I want and it's built up enough, I can then flip everything over and go about it the other way. But that's the part that's going to take the longest, so I won't keep you guys in suspense as we're waiting to be able to flip parts. But I will show as I'm spraying them here. So I think everything's tacked up, we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and slap my mask on and we're going to go ahead and start shooting some color. Now this paint is a single stage paint, it will go on as one color with no clear on the top of it. If I think I might need a clear, I might slap that on after I've gotten my color on, but I will need to do that within probably a 24 hour period if I'm going to put that clear on. Otherwise that clear won't stick, it'll flake off. doing now is just kind of a tack coat, nothing crazy. Like I said, I will need to rotate my parts. surface as you can at this point that way the next time that you flip you won't have to flip back to fix something
mask right now, I would have so much red paint inside my nose that when I went to blow my nose, I would see nothing but red. Not a good thing. So again, make sure you wear your mask. You can buy these cheap masks at any auto parts stores, usually in the painting section. Doesn't hurt to have a few extra on hand. color choice. I think it's going to look good against the truck. Through the wheel is a very nice accent color. Okay, we've laid two fairly decent coats on it now. What has to happen is this needs time to tack and to dry enough for us to touch and move the parts without damaging without damaging that top coat. Because this is our top coat. This is pretty much what the parts are gonna look like once they're dry. So we need time for that to dry fully before we can flip them and do our last coat. Now, I'm hoping that in the next, hopefully, hour or so, it'll be ready to go and I can hit it with that last coat when I flip it. But like I said, the important part now is to paint enough of the parts that when we flip it, I don't have to go back and touch anything up because this does have to dry completely before I can flip. That needs to be completely tacked up to where when I flip that part over, the weight of the part against the paint isn't going to cause the paint to stick and peel up. Uh, with the self-etching primer, I was having that a little bit. So I'm hoping that when this dries this time and we go to flip it, it'll be completely set up to where I won't have to worry about that paint peeling off. Due to how long things are taking, I'm going to go ahead and make this video a two-parter. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here with you. I'd like to say if you get a chance, check out the playlists in the description below. I've linked those in so you can binge watch if you want. But I'd like to say thank you for watching. Please shoot this video a like, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one.